Hi, everyone. I think we can go ahead and get it started since we have a lot of great information coming today. Um, thank you again for joining day two, session two of the Digital Inclusion Week training series. My name is Michaela Miller and I'm from Enterprise um, and I'm happy to have you all here um, just to go over some brief logistics for those of you who may need to be new to WebEx. Um, we'll be using the Q&A feature for the Q&A at the end of the session. Um, please use the Q&A box or the chat box to ask any of your questions. Um, please let me know who the question is for if you have a specific question for one of the presenters. And I think I will, oh, and also the session will be recorded, um, but I'll go ahead and pass this over to Dina for, to introduce our presenters. Thank you so much, Michaela. I really appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second and final webinar of today's Connect Home USA training series, which has been organized to celebrate National Digital Inclusion Week. This webinar will feature Connect Home USA connectivity stakeholders. These are internet service providers that have worked hand in hand with Connect Home USA communities for several years now to bring affordable internet products to the residents that we serve. Secretary Carson extended his gratitude yesterday, and I'd like to also personally thank them for helping us do this important work. We really couldn't do it without you, and as I often say, this work takes a village. So thank you so much. Um, a note to our audience, the, the, the folks you'll hear from today are dedicated and passionate about the mission of bridging the digital divide. Though I've come to know them from their work with our Connect Home USA communities, I also know that they've done incredible work for other and with other PHAs. So today there's something for everyone who is joining us. So thank you to our audience and thank you to our panelists. Um, let me introduce our, our um, star lineup today. So first up we have David, David Bevent, the Senior National Director of uh, the Public Sector Direct Sales for T-Mobile. Virginia Lamb Abrams, Senior Vice President for Government Affairs and Strategic Advancement at Starry, Inc. Madeline St. Ange, the Director of Communications and Government Relations at Starry, Inc. Fernando Cardenas, who is the Senior Manager for Employee Engagement and Partnerships at Comcast. And Ebony Younger, who is a Product Manager with Cox. So with that, thank you all, and I will pass it to David to get us started. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Dina, and thank you, Michaela. Uh, just want to make sure, Dina, that you can hear me okay? Beautiful, yes. All right, wonderful. Well, let's uh, let's go right in uh, and uh, go to the next slide if we could. Uh, you know, uh, one of the, the privileges in my job, and I appreciate everyone uh, joining, is to uh, oversee T-Mobile's U.S. division uh, for government, and that includes uh, many facets. Uh, from you know, supporting uh, kindergarten through 12th grade uh, education connectivity, higher education, uh, departments of transportation, uh, communication groups for the Department of Defense and civilian agencies on the federal government side, as well as uh, state, uh, city, and county uh, work. And we see many things uh, that are of importance that, that the government is doing to help uh, make sure that society has uh, success. And one of the things that uh, T-Mobile had looked at across the landscape was who was doing great work. And one of the places that was immediate uh, and very obvious to us is the great work that you are doing uh, to make sure that you provide affordable and equitable housing, uh, which is really the bedrock of stability of any family. Uh, and there's so many other decisions that uh, lead uh, as stemmed from having that stable home base. And so I want to start off just on behalf of all of T-Mobile's employees, all 88,000 of us, and thank you for the work that, that you're doing. Uh, this has been a year unlike no other year. And I think all of us are very familiar with the challenges that uh, have been there. In just a matter of months, the digital divide has grown um, you know, pretty substantially. And uh, as you well know, because you see this each and every day, uh, some of the low-income families uh, have felt this uh, pressure the most. And mobile connectivity, as we know, is an essential part to help bridge the digital divide. Internet access really does mean um, access to jobs. It means uh, connections. It means healthcare. Uh, and it also means education and learning. So one of the things that T-Mobile is really proud to do is try and help bring three components to the table each and every time. One of them is people need a computing device. 
and uh, they need a device that has modern software and can work where people need to go and work uh, and also um, leverages and uses modern application as well as the connectivity. And so that's really what I want to talk about today is what we can do and how we can help um, you uh, team up and do that uh, in an extremely affordable way even though that we know that every dollar is precious in terms of what you have. If we could go to the next slide. Uh, T-Mobile is committed to closing that digital divide alongside of you, and we've been partnering with uh, cities across the nation and Connect Home USA, and we're so proud uh, to be doing that. As you heard Dina say, we've signed a stakeholders agreement, and we take that commitment very serious. One of the things we want to do is we want to make sure that we're equipping communities with devices that change lives, that create opportunity. And T-Mobile uh, has the largest 5G or fifth generation network offered in the United States. And these are emerging technologies that are going to really um, help benefit uh, you know, Americans throughout and we think can be uh, of, of high uh, you know, uh, help uh, to people um, that are in um, your, uh, your safe housing. Uh, part of the solutions are uh, internet-based tablets and or hotspots. And certain uh, communities view that uh, differently. They may want to power uh, you know, other computers if people already have an endpoint device that works and has modern software. If they don't, they may need a tablet uh, or device to be able to, to make those uh, connections. And at a 75% reduced rate, uh, T-Mobile allows the housing authority to buy on behalf uh, of a resident um, on a sustainable um, agreement for $10 per month and have unlimited connectivity for that end resident uh, on a tablet or on a hotspot uh, device. And so the outcome of that is that families get that unlimited data plan with two gigabits of that data being at our highest or our best uh, throughput speeds uh, in order for them to connect uh, and never having an option to, to have overage or any other sort of taxes or fees that would increase that, that that would be a flat bill or a flat payment. And so you have that commitment from T-Mobile as part of our stakeholders agreement. If we could go to the next. And the other thing that we have seen this lead to is uh, employment opportunities. And when I heard Dr. Carson, when he officially uh, took office, one of the biggest things that Dr. Carson was focused on was helping uh, improve the employment opportunities of residents. Uh, we have known from research that roughly 3 in 10 adults with household incomes below $30,000 a year, uh, which is 29% of people, don't own a smartphone. And more than 4 in 10 don't have broadband services at home. Uh, and you're going to hear you know, from uh, both Comcast and Cox later about the importance of that as well. And a majority of low-income Americans are not tablet owners. And uh, one of the things that we've tried to do when we've done uh, any sort of deployment is pre-install um, applications on devices that help job seekers find more opportunities. And uh, it's to build digital equity. And so those are things like help them create a LinkedIn profile, uh, make sure that they have access to a resume builder and that that um, is something that they have good you know, uh, connection with to ensure that they have a Gmail or some other type of email account if they have a different brand preference. So that way they can easily communicate uh, with the workforce and anybody that they'd like to talk to uh, digitally. Uh, we also want to make sure that they know how to do local job searches. And there's many communities in your community, uh, including through housing authorities, where you know that there are jobs that are available to search. We want to make sure that they have access to be able to do that. And then also that we help train them and we make them familiar with local recruiters, community colleges, uh, uh, and businesses that help um, you know, have distribution events uh, to make sure that they are plugged into the social fabric and also on-site support uh, to show residents how to help set up those uh, different tools. And so that's a big part of it. It's not just providing the tool, but it's also providing events and training that help uh, people understand how to, to, to do that. So let's go to the next. Some of the big benefits that we see uh, as well are, uh, you know, the connectivity provides life-changing opportunities. I just talked about the opportunity um, uh, for employment. Uh, you know, as I've heard in California and through Mayor de Blasio and so many different places around the country, health and wellness and telemedicine are a big factor of need. Uh, and any time that you don't have to leave and go sit in a waiting room where there are other people who are ill, uh, to be able to see a doctor is a big deal. And through um, access with these tablets, 
hotspots and that connectivity, health and wellness and telemedicine is absolutely possible. And we want to make sure that we provide that connectivity. And then we also know that many of these households have uh, school-aged uh, children uh, in the K through 12 space. And I want to, you know, in the next coming slides, dive in just a little bit deeper to each one of these. So if we could go to the next. On the health and wellness and telemedicine, uh, elderly citizens um, have more access through healthcare and connectivity. Uh, video conferencing is a big deal uh, with primary care physicians and now more than ever. Uh, to be able to um, you know, check uh, their blood, their glucose, uh, their oxygen level readings, uh, physicians can prescribe medications uh, via electronic um, uh, ability to do that and be able to get those. Uh, and there are different um, applications as well as you know, how people are sleeping, uh, what they're doing in terms of their nutrition and their intake, uh, any fitness goals that they may have, as well as access to items like the Mayo Clinic and many other um, you know, uh, healthcare providers have access. Uh, T-Mobile um, is uh, the primary communications provider for the Veterans Affairs Administration and the 2,200 hospitals and hosts over 18,000 video connections every single day through the VA. And so if you happen to have veterans in your community, that's another thing that we're very proud to help um, host and post. Uh, Gartner uh, predict, uh, predicts that virtual health assistance will become one of many transformational mobile health tools, uh, giving valuable health care and guidance. Uh, and so if you have residents, and I know many of you do, I know I heard from Chicago how, how passionate the Chicago Housing Authority is uh, towards helping residents of age uh, be able to get access to these critical tools. This is one of the big enablers that we um, you see as an opportunity. Let's go to the next slide. The other is the digital divide, and um, in K through 12, at the Besant household, I've got three kids in K through 12 uh, school. In fact, I just did the very first parent-teacher video conference last night with one of my kids, uh, and it was an incredible experience. In fact, I wish that technology had been there uh, when I had done regular business travel when I couldn't attend many of those uh, types of meetings. And being able to pre-install uh, educational apps that are pertinent to uh, grade specific, whether that be Khan Academy, ABC Mouse, uh, English as a Second Language, uh, coding and computer programming for higher education, whether that's STEM or STEAM. Uh, uh, the, through the pandemic, 15 and 16 million U.S. households um, out of 50 million households uh, do not have or have lacked internet connectivity and access. And by the way, T-Mobile is putting all of our full force and efforts, and we've connected over 2 million students just this year. Uh, with connectivity, and that's something that we'd be happy to team with you on to make sure that each and every resident doesn't have uh, children in a home who lack or have any gap towards their communication. So if we can help you uh, bridge the digital divide, that's something that we're very passionate about. Uh, and you may see our, uh, you know, advertisements on television talking about our Project 10 million. And I head those programs and would, be lo would love to talk to you. Uh, and, you know, and so when we take a look at you know, HUD assistant residents with connectivity, getting access to our nationwide network covering 99% of Americans we think is a big deal. One of the things that we know is that um, all of us today in society are very mobile. And having something that leaves your home and uh, goes with you, whether that be on bus routes or transportation, gives you GPS connectivity uh, to where you go, if you just want to break out and go to the park, um, whatever it is that you essentially want to do, there's great opportunity for you to be able to do that. And you can do that for as little as $10 a month. Or if you want truly unlimited high-speed data where the data is never deprioritized and it's always at that fastest window, you can get that uh, connectivity for $19.74. Uh, many of the residents have chose the $10 package, which is also unlimited, where speeds could reduce uh, above and beyond the two gigabits of the highest uh, speed uh, connectivity. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, T-Mobile has uh, done these projects in over 26 cities. We've contributed over $5 million, and we've connected uh, through housing authorities directly over 30,000 uh, plus different residences. 
and we've been so uh, proud to partner, you know, with uh, you know NYCHA in New York, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Philadelphia, and the great work that Kelvin and his team have done. So many of you out there, you know, I know there's many that I'm not uh, mentioning right now, have really stepped up to help, um, you know, uh, your residents in each and every different one of these categories. And T-Mobile is happy to help you know, partner, uh, you know, in a city near you. You may be wondering what coverage looks like if we go to the next slide. Uh, around the U.S. Whoops, uh, there we go. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that T-Mobile covers 99% of Americans with 4G LTE. And um, one of the things that T-Mobile has deployed, and T-Mobile, if you weren't aware, um, also merged with Sprint. And so we've combined these two great networks into one supercharged communication network throughout the United States. Uh, one of the things that T-Mobile had deployed was six and 700 megahertz. And what those frequencies do is they travel uh, really well into rural America, and they also penetrate buildings and infrastructure uh, with a high degree of success. And that's really important during COVID. Uh, to be able to have great connectivity and also boast uh, data throughput speeds on averages of 42 megabits per second, which is, uh, which is very helpful uh, if you need high-speed, fast mobile Internet connectivity. If we could go to the next. So, you know, all in, you know, affordable connectivity um, is something that we're, we're committed to. We want to provide your residents more opportunity. We want to help connect communities into different digital sessions, empower students, and we want to make sure that we do all of that in a safe and secure Internet environment. SIPA filtering is something that T-Mobile can also add uh, for those residents and school-aged uh, children uh, who are minors, uh, and we can do that at no additional cost as well. So we just want to make sure that that is there. And so we just want to make sure that you know that we're here for you. Uh, you know, you're welcome to reach out. I'm happy to give my email out if anybody wanted to contact me directly. Or you can call 1-877-386-4246, and you can book an appointment. They'll literally set up an appointment with a member of my team uh, who lives in your community who will come either live on site or do a digital session with you and help you get access to that. And with that, I just want to say thanks again uh, to everything that you know, uh, you're know you all doing from your work to Connect Home USA, to Dina uh, and team, and Michaela for the opportunity to be here. And I look forward to Q&A if there is any. Thanks so much. Thank you, David. Thank you David. So much. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Um, we'll go ahead and move right along to Starry. So, Virginia and Madeline, are you guys ready to present? We are. Thank you so much, Michaela. And thank you, Dina, for that wonderful introduction. Um, you know, I think it's really great to be here again presenting um, at the annual summit and to be really on a panel with um, folks who um, share our passion for um, helping solve uh, the connectivity issues that all of our um, communities face. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Virginia Lom Ingram, and as Dean said earlier, I'm the Senior Vice President of Government Affairs and Strategic Advancement at Starry. I also have the privilege of leading our digital equity initiative, Starry Connect, and that's what's going to be the focus of our discussion and introduction today. Um, I'm joined by my colleague as well, Madeline St. Ange, who helped lead our efforts and um, our relationship building with our public housing partners as well as our affordable housing um, uh, partners as well. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, so, Starry, what is Starry? We are a wideband hybrid fiber wireless internet service provider. That is really a mouthful to say that we are a next generation fixed wireless provider. We are a wireless last mile solution to provide high quality, high capacity broadband to the home. We are a startup and we were built on the simple foundation that we believe everyone deserves access to affordable, high-quality broadband no matter where you live. Our goal is to build intelligent wireless access networks so that we can connect as many people as possible to affordable broadband. Today, we operate in five major metropolitan areas, including Boston, New York City, Washington, D.C., Denver, and Los Angeles, and we have an expansion roadmap that will take us to more than 30 million households in over 100 cities in the next five years. If we could go to the next slide, please. 
Starry and our service is really built on a customer first foundation, and that foundation really starts with affordability. Um, our standard service that we offer today is $50 a month for 200 megabit symmetrical speeds. Um, that's with no data caps, no additional fees for equipment or installation, and it includes 24-7 customer care. Um, it is broadband only. We don't bundle in any additional services like TV, um, and it comes with um, really a mindset in terms of a different type of interaction with your internet service provider that you don't classically get today. Um, Again, it comes with a lot of transparency, fair pricing, and deep commitments to both customer privacy and net neutrality. Um, if we can go to the next slide. So today we're really going to focus on our digital equity program, Starry Connect. Um, as I mentioned, the core foundation of our company is providing affordable broadband, but we recognized very early on in the beginnings of our company that even though $50 is a wonderful price point, it's still out of financial reach for many families. As you all may know, in the United States, we have the highest standalone broadband costs in the developed world. And that affordability threshold is really what creates this massive digital gap, particularly in our urban communities. Many of you know, we've been talking about the digital divide for years now. And often that conversation is couched in an urban versus a rural digital divide. And what, what was sort of hiding in plain view, and, I, and we really talk about this particularly in the context of COVID, is that the urban digital gap was incredibly urgent and, um, and, and it existed, but it was somewhat invisible because pre-COVID, folks that didn't have broadband at home could avail themselves of public resources like public libraries or community centers or other public Wi-Fi access points to get the connectivity that they may have needed for either work or for school. But with the pandemic, what that really revealed to us is once those public resources closed down, our families really had no, nowhere to turn if they didn't have an affordable um, broadband option in their home. So that's where Starry Connect really is um, a critical partner to both public and affordable housing owners. And if we could go to the next slide, please. So how does Starry Connect work? Starry Connect provides 30 megabit symmetrical service for $15 a month per resident. Um, again, it's with the same no data caps, no long-term contracts, no bundles, and it includes all equipment and installation and 24-7 customer care. The critical difference with Starry Connect is that we don't require any individual eligibility requirements. So when someone comes to sign up for Starry Connect, you just are able to sign up. We don't require you to prove participation in SNAP benefits or any other federal um, program in order to avail yourself of Starry Connect because we partner directly with the housing owner. We work to qualify entire communities so that we, we tie eligibility to the apartment unit and not to the individual. And that to us has been a real game changer in helping drive adoption within communities um, that have had low broadband adoption in the past. Um, it is a really effective way of working with our housing partners um, in providing real value from day one. And a real key part of lowering that threshold, that barrier to adoption, is that there is no additional wait time, there is no additional paperwork, and we just make it simple and easy to sign up for service. If you go to the next slide, please. Today, we're really proud to say that since our launch in late 2018, we've added a whole host of Star Connect partners, including public housing authorities ranging from the Boston Housing Authority, the Denver Housing Authority, the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles, as well as Englewood, Colorado, which is innovative housing concepts. Um, we're working to expand our partnerships um, and um, have grown it on the affordable side as well, um, with our largest partner being the latest affordable um, in New York and soon to expand um, into Southern California as well. You go to the next slide. Um, as we all know, um, COVID-19 has really brought into clear focus the digital gap um, in our communities, and particularly in our public housing communities. As everyone on this panel um, uh, participated as well in the FCC's Keep Americans Connected Pledge, Starry took it a step further by extending our pledge to not discontinue service 
um, due to non-payment uh, during the COVID crisis. We extended it through July 31st of this year. And in addition, we launched our Fresh Start Debt Forgiveness so that we wiped away any debt that was accrued during that period so that all of our customers who were impacted by COVID could start with a $0 balance in August. Um, we extended our Starry Connect service. We made it free during that entire pledge period. And one, and we were grateful that one of our partners related affordable raise its hand to also participate and cover the cost of Starry Connect um, for their residents as well. You could go to the next slide. Additionally, we worked with our housing partners to respond swiftly in terms of um, uh, keeping our employees and residents safe during this period. As you all know, broadband providers were deemed essential service providers during um, the height of the crisis, and so we continued to operate to ensure that we kept all of our families and communities connected and were able to add um, connectivity for folks who didn't have it during this period. The last piece I'd like to highlight is our partnership with the City of Los Angeles and the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles. We launched our partnership with them in June um, at Mar Vista Gardens. This is a community of more than 600 households in Los Angeles' Delray neighborhood. Um, this is a community that had had a history of connectivity issues and was only a single provider, uh, with a single provider community, um, which had led to high costs and other challenges um, for residents there. We came and launched service in June, and we have committed to providing Free Starry Connect service through the end of the year to ensure that families that need the critical connectivity, particularly families with public school students, can continue to be online um, and, and have their uh, children uh, adequately virtually learn um, for this period. It's been a successful partnership. Um, and we will be expanding it with HACLA and making additional announcements um, with the Housing Authority later this year. Thank you all, and we look forward to any questions that you might have about Starry and Starry Connect. Thank you, Virginia. Yes, we already have quite a few questions coming in. Um, everyone, please keep your questions coming in as we continue with the session. Um, next up, we will have Fernando from Comcast give his presentation. Fernando, are you there? Can you all hear me? Yeah, sounds good. Oh, great. Uh, thank you so much for, for the invitation to join you all to talk about something that's so important and that has been uh, really um, core to who we are at Comcast for a while, which is to solve um, solving the digital divide. And I just want to echo what everyone else has been saying. Um, you know, with this pandemic, the digital divide and digital uh, equity has been thrust to the spotlight. And what I think is so important is um, that we're all coming together to, to be able to solve this issue. You know, I don't think that one single entity is able to solve this problem. It's such a complex um, social issue. Um, and, and the fact that we're all here um, talking about different opportunities for folks to be able to connect, I think is so important. Um, and we can start, we can jump right in, we can go to the next slide. So Internet Essentials is uh, the nation's largest and most comprehensive digital equity program. We've been doing this now uh, for the past eight years. We've connected over 8 million people uh, from low-income households to the Internet at home. And, and we've been able to do that because of the partnerships that we've been able to create with um, housing authorities such as yourselves, with community uh, agencies, schools, and municipalities across the country to really tackle this issue. Um, and we can go to the next slide. And so what Internet Essentials is, it's a wraparound approach um, to helping folks cross the digital, digital divide. There are three main components to our program um, that sort of build off one another to ensure that we're able to, to meet our customers where they are and take them on on the journey to make sure they have not only the device but the skills needed to um, take advantage of their new Internet connection. So, the first thing is that we offer an in-home internet connection for $9.95 a month. There's no contract, no credit check, um, free self-install kit. Um, uh, and then just recently what we announced that I think is so important um, is we announced that all of our Internet Essentials customers now have access to X5 parental controls and advanced security. So now that, you know, 
most everyone is learning from home, is working from home, students are, are, are doing their classes, that parents have the opportunity to be able to monitor what their students are uh, digesting when they're, when they're learning online. And then in addition to that, uh, and this is just for Internet Essentials customers, they now have access, unlimited access to all of the Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots across the country. And that's a change, uh, permanent change to the program. So moving forward, any Internet Essentials customers uh, can log into any Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspot and use as many, uh, as much connection as they need. Um, in addition to that, we've also uh, given our customers the opportunity to purchase a highly discounted uh, subsidized computer, so it's a laptop or desktop, which we know right now is extremely important. Not only do you need a connection, but also that device to be able to, to fully participate online. And then I think what's a uh, uh, cornerstone and just uh, what we've been able to do with all of you as partners is to provide um, digital skill training uh, in online through our online learning center and print through different curriculum and in person through funding digital skills classes across the country. And we've been able to invest $650 million in this initiative because we know not only um, is the connection important, but you, you know, giving folks the skills to be able to take advantage of that um, and to really engage in those ways. Um, so that's really describes our wraparound approach. And we can go to the next slide. Um, so who's eligible for, for the program? Again, it's a program that's designed to help connect uh, low-income households across the, the country. It's a broadband adoption program. So um, it's, it's for folks that uh, live within the Comcast Internet Service Area. Um, it's a program uh, not for current Xfinity customers. And then uh, traditionally, um, if you owe debt to Comcast, this program wasn't available to you, but we uh, have temporarily relaxed our bad debt um, policy. And so any new customer that signs up for Internet Essentials by December 31st will receive, will have that debt forgiven so that they can uh, participate in the program. And then we really look at um, uh, at folks that are participating in one of various public assistance programs, public housing being one of them. Um, and our program started uh, eight years ago, really focused on school-aged children. And over the course of the years, um, and working with partner organizations and in listening, we've been able to expand um, to now be able to serve all low-income households within our footprint. Um, so we're really excited to be able to just meet um, customers where they are. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So our COVID-19 response, um, we came out pretty strongly in March um, to say that we were going to try to do our best to make sure that we uh, maintained uh, our customers connected, but that we also offered an opportunity for any customer um, give them an, a, a route to be able to participate in our program. So what we did is uh, we announced that any new Internet Essentials customer who applied would receive their first two months uh, free of service. We've since uh, expanded that twice. So now any new Internet Essentials customer, if they apply by December 31st, they will receive their first two months uh, of service for free. We've also permanently increased our speeds um, to 25.3 to make sure that uh, families are able to participate um, if they're working or learning from home. And as I mentioned prior, uh, we've uh, relaxed our bad debt rule to ensure that more folks are able to take part of this program during this critical time. And then again, our Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots are open uh, for any, uh, any user. It doesn't have to be an Xfinity or Internet Essentials user through uh, December 31st. Um, we can move on. Um, so, as we're all talking now, you know, uh, COVID again has really put the spotlight and, and brought people together to, to find creative solutions to be able to connect folks during the, these difficult times. And a result of that is uh, our, the launch of our new Internet Essential Partnership Program, um, which launched um, last uh, in August. And then what our partnership program is, it's essentially designed to help accelerate Internet adoption to bring connectivity to scale by uh, creating public and uh, private partnerships with schools, uh, philanthropy partners, uh, cities across the country. So essentially what it is is um, providing the opportunity for agencies, uh, cities, schools to sponsor service uh, for their clients uh, through the Internet Essentials program. Um, it's something that we're really proud of, something that has grown quite quickly. 
Um, we now have over, I believe it's over 100 of these programs across the country connecting, uh, with the goal of connecting upwards of 245,000 um, households, which is pretty impressive. Um, some notable partnerships to, to talk about are um, in Chicago, where we have a goal of connecting um, 200,000 students there. Um, we also have a partnership program here in Philadelphia to connect 35,000 students and their families to the Internet. Um, it's really uh, being able to, to support families um, on the long term. And then just a shout out um, to T-Mobile. I know we've partnered on, on a number of these across the country. Here in Philly, um, uh, T-Mobile is also an option for hotspots. And just most uh, recently, we also announced our uh, Wi-Fi connected live zones, which we're really proud about this. Um, you know, as more folks are, are at home, they're either learning or working from home, um, oftentimes the home may not be an adequate place to either learn or, or to conduct business in uh, for a number of reasons. And so we're, as we were working through all of these issues and in speaking with our partners, we were uh, looking to, to create opportunities, safe opportunities outside of the home where folks could continue to connect. And so we just announced our Live Phones where we are essentially lighting up um, our community uh, nonprofit agencies across the country with free Wi-Fi uh, so that uh, students and their families and neighborhoods across our footprint are able to connect to um, strong Wi-Fi and be able to continue to participate in online learning. Um, we're working with a number of partners um, to create safe spaces to make sure that we're following um, COVID guidelines so that folks are able to, to join and connect. Um, 200 of these will be up and, and running by end of the year, um, and we hope to have 1,000 running by next year. Um, this is a three-year commitment, so um, we're hoping to, to continue to do this, um, hopefully post-COVID. Um, and infuse some of these list zones with some digital skills programming. So we're really excited about, about this uh, partnership here, which is just to really work with communities to identify the areas of need and, and light those uh, places up with Wi-Fi. We can go to the next slide. Um, so just an important thing uh, for folks, uh, a resource to all of you is the Internet Essentials Learning Center. It's an ungated online environment where you can uh, gain digital skills in a variety of, of topics from Internet basics, online safety, to um, there's workforce development uh, lessons on here as well where you can learn about resume skills, um, interview skills, um, and how to upskill and reskill using uh, different uh, uh, digital skills. Uh, the important thing about the Learning Center, uh, just for folks that have school-age children at home, is we've partnered with Common Sense Media, and so we have Wide Open School there uh, available. And another resource for all of our partners is our Partner Portal. So if you go to partner.internetessentials.com, you can log in and download or have all of our marketing materials be sent to your location in any quantity you'd like um, in up to 30 languages um, so that you're able to message out to your communities about the Internet Essentials program and help them connect. Um, we also have uh, right now some awesome curriculum around online safety, uh, specifically for seniors and young students. So it's a resource for, for all of you and, and just, a, you know, you're able to access it whenever you, you have a chance. And um, with that, just want to say again, thank you all for having us here today. Um, I would say that, you know, for us, we again, the success of our program has been because of folks like yourselves who are super passionate about connecting your communities, and we're always there to listen and to, to be able to redesign and modify what we do to make sure that we're meeting our, our customers uh, where they are. So, again, thank you all for having me um, and looking forward to questions. Thanks so much, Fernando. Um, you have definitely a lot of questions coming in for you, so be on the lookout for that. Um, we have our last but not least, Ebony Younger from Cox Communications here with us. Um, and Ebony will be having some videos during your presentation, so please make sure all the panelists, you guys are muted, um, so we won't pick up any feedback. And I'll pass it on to Ebony. Well, thank you so much. So thank you again, Ebony Younger here from Cox Communications, and I am the product manager for Connect to Compete. 
which is our in-home um, affordable broadband uh, internet product. And I just, you know, will echo the sentiments of all the other panelists and that it's just a delight to be here. And I love being able to tell the Connect to Compete story. Um, Connect to Compete was birthed um, out of a desire for our CEO and President Pat Esser um, because he knew that having a strong connection in the home um, was key to the success of students. And, and we saw that way back when. And so we have been in existence nationally since 2012 and have connected um, over 750,000 low-income individuals. And so that's a little bit about our why, but I'll tee up the first video so you can see it kind of in action. Great. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes I'm good as well. Okay, perfect. So we can move on to the next slide. Um, so just a little bit about what Connect to Compete is from a product standpoint. And so for $9.95, um, you get 25.3. 
Uh, as far as the speeds are concerned, there are no contracts, no activation fee. Uh, the Wi-Fi modem rental is included um, and uh, no installation fees as well. Um, we push most of our customers to doing self-installs, but even if a customer needs pro install, um, maybe due to wiring issues or what have you, uh, that's also at no cost to the customer. Uh, we've also extended free access to all of our Wi-Fi hotspots, and so we have three million of them um, throughout our um, throughout our markets. And then finally, from a digital literacy standpoint, I'm echoing some of the panelists here today and, and how important that is to not only provide the connectivity, but also making sure that students and parents are aware of how to stay safe online, setting secure passwords, how to not, um, you know, get taken advantage of with regards to phishing scams or what have you. So we do have a Cox Digital Academy, um, and we actually feature not only um, Common Sense Media's Wide Open Schools, uh, but Cox Camp campus as well, which is uh, something that was funded uh, between the, um, I believe, the Atlanta Speech School um, and Cox Enterprises, which is our parent company. Um, and so we continue to make updates there to make sure that the content is relevant. And that is at no cost uh, to connect to compete families. And in fact, all Cox customers is not behind any type of paywall there. Um, from an eligibility standpoint, um, in order to participate in connect to compete, you need to have at least one child K through 12 in the household and qualify for a government subsidy program. So that could be free or reduced lunch to the national school lunch program, um, being in public housing um, or qualifying for WIC. So you can move on to the next slide. So want to highlight quickly for you just some of our COVID highlights. Um, again, you know, echoing everyone else, you know, it really, COVID really sh uh, shined a light um, on how big that gap was as far as the homework gap or the digital equity gap or, you know, whatever term we want to put to that. Uh, but it really highlighted it, and especially in our market. Um, just to give you a little bit of context, uh, in 2019, we connected about 29,000 households between March 13th um, and up until probably last week, I think is the last time I pulled these numbers, uh, we connected 54,000 families. So that's two years just about worth of families that were connected uh, during this time uh, period. So that is, that is really awesome. The other piece that we um, launched as well is our um, Cox Cares Act Solutions for Education. Um, so we still have our Connect to Compete offer, but for schools who need to support not only students, but also maybe teachers, because that, that's something that we really haven't talked about, uh, that teachers are also uh, a part of that uh, digital divide and not having strong enough connection or a connection at all within the homes. And so we partnered with over uh, 450 schools to get students connected quickly. So um, we eliminated the need for them to show documentation and was able to fast track them through the process. Uh, uh, and we've signed up so far 52 schools who are using CARES dollars to subsidize um, their students and their teachers. Finally, we are realizing that, you know, customers who are newly onto the program are understanding and appreciating um, having that connection in the home. We have a very low uh, churn rate. Um, customers tend to, tend to stay on uh, longer than some of our other uh, 1P data products. Um, and then we also, re uh, kind of forgave some of our, or lifted some of our restrictions. Um, so previous debt was a big thing. We did not want that to be a barrier of entry, especially during this time when we know that unemployment is really, really high. And so we didn't want previous debt uh, to prevent a family who needed to get on and connect to compete from getting on there. And so we relieved some of that bad debt. Um, and we've also forgiven fees uh, through, uh, late fees through June of 2020. Um, and I think there's one video that will show a little bit about uh, our, our after COVID response. So you can play that. Thank you. And then we can go to the last slide. 
So none of this really would be possible without our partners. And, um, you know, again, Cox does what it does best by providing a strong internet connection in the home. Uh, but how we get the word out there, how we, you know, make sure that equipment gets to families is through our strong partnership. Um, for instance, Boys and Girls Club, we have over 100 innovation labs throughout the country. Um, we talked a little bit again about Common Sense Media. Uh, they uh, provide content for probably 90% of our digital academy, um, and they're always on the cutting edge, um, especially with that um, great report uh, that came out not too long ago. We also forged a relationship with PCs for People, who is a national refurbisher and can drop ship uh, desktops and laptops all over the country um, because we do have strong partnerships with some of the local providers like San Diego Computers for Kids. Uh, but knowing that the need was, was greater, we forged that relationship a little bit earlier this year. Um, and then really quick, I know we're up for time and I hear that there's a lot of questions, so I am going to uh, play one last video, and this is with Cano. So Cano is, uh, I think they were Toy of the Year in 2018, and basically it's a kit that helps get kids excited about coding, building computers, and, and, and understanding all the things that you can do uh, with a quality device. And so we held three events last year uh, with Cano um, in partnership with um, Boys and Girls Club in, in, in one school, and where we were able to bring in some of our employees from our diversity councils and employers resource groups where they were able to sit down with kids and facilitate the process of them building the, the computer. And so here um, is a, a highlight reel of one of our events in San Diego.
All right, so that's it for me. Thank you again so much for allowing uh, me to share our Connected Compete story. Uh, if you want more information or how to get in contact with us, you can just simply visit uh, cox.com slash C2C, um, and that has uh, a lot more information for you there. So thank you again for your time. Thank you so much, Ebony, and I know now we're going to move on to Q&A, and so I'll turn it over to uh, Michaela to manage the Q&A. It sounds like we already have questions that have come in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much, Dina. Um, the question that we're getting a lot from panelists is how can they get in contact with you? So if all the panelists, if you guys could drop maybe your phone number or your email address in the chat for the attendees, that would be great um, just to get started. Um, and then I'll go ahead and read the questions in the order they were received. So, looks like our first question is from Comcast, it's for Comcast. Um, this person says, my clients are stating that they have been told in order for them to get the $10 internet for low income housing, they already have a package, and they already have a package, they have to wait until that contract is over. Is that correct? And if so, is there any way around that for low income individuals that knew nothing of this service with Comcast? Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Hello? Fernando? Okay, great, sorry. I was having some, <laughs> some difficulties here. So I think the question is around current Xfinity uh, customers um, potentially uh, joining in the Internet Essentials program. So what they would have to do is give us a call back and speak to one of our agents to see what um, opportunities are available for them. We um, have a number of uh, programs for uh, current Xfinity customers who are having uh, difficulties right now, because as you can imagine, you know, um, with everything going on, folks um, are um, strapped. And so um, our customer service representatives should be able to find a solution for them. Um, and potentially Internet Essentials um, may be an option in certain areas if they are participating in an IE Internet Essentials Partnership Program, uh, but currently, as it stands, the, there is a policy that current Xfinity customers um, should not have Xfinity service for 90 days. But I would say uh, the best thing to do is to call us um, and to speak with one of our customer service agents to see if we can potentially uh, work with them on what we have as a Xfinity Assistance Program, which is a, a little bit similar um, in terms of pricing. Thanks. Thanks, Fernando. I think that's helpful. Um, next question is for T-Mobile. Um, they want to know how good is the service with T-Mobile in Northwest Montana? That is a great question. Um, I'd want to get really specific about the cities and take a look at uh, the homes uh, that were there. Uh, T-Mobile has done a massive expansion in both Montana, uh, Wyoming and Idaho through some of those frequencies that we talked about. Uh, but uh, I, I'd love to uh, connect directly and make sure we're really precise in that because we want it to work great for you. Um, it, my email, uh, I did put it in the chat, it's david.bezant, B as in boy, E, Z, Z, A, N, T, at t-mobile.com. And if you don't mind pinging me, we'll get uh, connected with you right away. We'll also pull in an engineer if there's anything that we need to do to, to take a look at in your area. Thank you for asking. Thanks, David. Um, our next question came during the SAR presentation, so I think that's who it was directed to. Um, they asked, when we think about further addressing the digital divide, is the speed of 30 me megabytes per second really adequate for the ability to connect to video conferencing with physicians, schools, and employment? Hi, this is Virginia from Starry. Um, for us, and what I think a lot of folks have learned during this pandemic period, that it's not purely just the download speed, but it's also what you're getting on the uplink speed. And because Starry provides symmetrical service, so that means it's even across the download and the upload, what we have found is that um, it is 100% adequate for working and schooling from home, and that's multiple folks doing um, concurrent uh, video streams like Zoom or Google Meet or Skype or whatever um, the platform may be. Um, I will also say this, our 30 megabit symmetrical speed is a floor for Starry. That is the minimum that folks will get. And um, we, in every situation that we have had with our partners, have always delivered more than 30 megabits 
um, to our subscribers. So we have not seen any issues in this pandemic period. Again, it is a function of having symmetrical capacity on both the download, which is the ingest, as well as the upload, which is the data that you push out that you use um, during things like video conferencing that's really critical to providing um, a seamless experience for folks. Thanks, Virginia. Thank you so much. Um, next question is for Comcast, Fernando from Comcast. If a tenant is a current Comcast customer, can they switch to Internet Essentials or is this offered just for new customers to Comcast? So, um, again, the, it's uh, an offer for new um, customers to Internet Essentials, but there are some, uh, there are some provisions that if, if they, there's a potential to have a partnership program agreement or if some of the residents are uh, in a partnership program agreement, then there can be some potential um, possibilities there. But the general rule is that um, the offers for new new customers. Um, but, you know, folks should feel free to give us a call because there's a number of um, options available that our uh, customer service reps could work with them on. Um, thanks, Fernando. We have another, um, not really a question, but more of a recommendation um, from Teresa Noon. Um, she recommends Comcast maybe adding, adding a, quote, unquote, sponsor a local household option to customer bills um, for higher income customers to add a 995 one time or monthly sponsorship while paying monthly bills to help the local community. Um, do you think this is something that you guys could do in the future or have considered at all? Um, thank you for, for that recommendation. I will definitely bring that back to the team. Um, that's something way above uh, my pay grade, but it's such a great idea. Um, I think, you know, what we've been able to do the best is listen to our partners on the ground um, and see what we can do. So I will definitely bring this back and, and see what options we have. Thanks. Thanks, Fernando. Um, to that just really quickly. I think that's a wonderful idea. And here at Starry, um, while we don't have anything explicit for folks to be able to add an extra payment, we are starting to highlight that anytime we add a subscriber at our, I'll call our sort of market rate, our $50 plan, that every new subscriber that we add actually enables us to deploy our Starry Connect program to more public housing and to more affordable housing customers. And so I 100% agree with the idea that um, that when we look at digital equity as a broader community, this should really be um, an imperative that all of us feel that we have a responsibility to be a part of. And, you know, we certainly think that that's um, really crucial in calling out and, and we'll be doing more of that in the future. So I, Barbara, I think that's a fantastic idea and um, it's, it's right up our alley. I agree, that's awesome, that's awesome. Um, we have a lot of people asking if your services are in, what states are you guys' services in? Everyone, Starry, Comcast, Cox, T-Mobile. So um, could each of you guys maybe say what states your services are in? We have a lot of questions come up a lot of, a lot of times. Sure, and okay. I can drop it in the chat as well, because that might be easier than mm -hmm. uh, all of us listing yeah. all the states, especially because I know a lot of folks are, are nationwide. So um, is it better if we just drop it in the chat? Yeah, that might be better. Um, so anyone who asked that question, definitely refer to the chat um, to figure out what states these are available in. Um, we have a next question. I'll go ahead and do that while you guys are doing that. Um, the next question is for Cox, um, who someone want, also wants to know what state you're services are available in, but they also want to know, is the Cox Digital Academy available to everyone, even if they are not Cox Connect to affect recipients? Absolutely. Those who just are regular customers as well as Connect to Compete is not behind any paywall, so you should go there today to cox.com slash C2C and click on Digital Academy and be able to access all of that content for free. And I will also put our service areas um, uh, in the chat as well. well. We're all over. We have about 26 markets across the United States. Awesome. Thank you. Um, let's scroll down. Have some contact information in the chat. Okay. Um, is anyone considering doing programs in Hawaii? 
Hey, this is Dave from T-Mobile. Uh, you know, by the way, I was I was hoping to do a city by city read off on our coverage before uh, humorously. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a great question, and we we have put in chat where you can get that that connection. But I just was bragging on the chat that Hawaii was our very first market as a company. Literally, like we wouldn't be a company if it wasn't for Hawaii. We think we have pretty good connectivity out there, and so Timo would love to talk to you. In fact, I'd love to come out and help you install it. Awesome. Can I come too? That's um, Ebony. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, want to, I, I also want to do the Montana trip as well, just, just for the record. <laughs> well, David, while I have you here, um, someone else would like to know what is the connection like in Georgia? It's really good. Um, you know, Georgia is obviously a big state, so we'd want to get into the specific, you know, um, area uh, that we want to do. Um, but uh, it's one of the places that we've invested uh, the most network capacity and infrastructure in. And uh, I actually spend a lot of time um, in Georgia with different projects. And we're working, uh, I don't know uh, how many people know this, but T-Mobile has uh, our um, innovation lab uh, in Georgia called Peachtree Corner, which is a 300-acre campus where we're uh, testing things like autonomous scooters, so that you can hail a scooter and it will uh, come to you unmanned and go back to its station without a person uh, affiliated. And we do driverless autonomous cars. So we do an awful lot in Georgia, and we would love to talk to you. Awesome. Are you guys also available in Puerto Rico? We are. In fact, Puerto Rico is one of our number one market shares. Uh, and in fact, when uh, the terrible, terrible uh, devastation and storms uh, hit in Puerto Rico a few years ago, we uh, entirely rebuilt that, that market to modernize standards uh, that uh, you know, can withstand almost Category 5 level uh, storms. And we have a really, really good infrastructure in Puerto Rico. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks, David. Um, next question for all the panelists in general, I guess a few of you can answer. How many of you are willing to work with tribal communities to work on bringing the infrastructure into tribal lands? I hate to, to keep talking, but this is David. I'm actually working with Governor Ducey in Arizona on a, uh, on a project um, right now, uh, and we're teaming with uh, Arizona State University. I happen to live in Utah, and uh, we're also um, you're teaming with the Department of Interior, and so I'm raising my hand high. And in fact, um, you know, in tribal communities, one of the things I'd be really interested in having a conversation about is would the tribes like to have their own MVNO or their own ability to distribute you know, something that's branded by their own community? So lots of cool conversations to have, but we're very interested. Yeah, and this is um, Fernando from Comcast. Just wanted to join in on this conversation. Um, we've worked with with a number of organizations on providing um, support to to tribal members. Um, you know, a good portion of of folks are uh, live within cities. And in the past, we've authored um, reports with the National Indian Urban Family Coalition. And just last year, we participated in the Internet Society's um, Indigenous Connectivity Summit, which aims to do just that: bring together. Um, different uh, internet providers, nonprofits to talk about these issues and to see, you know, what we are able to do. So we, we are involved in those conversations and um, are happy to learn more from folks on the ground as to what, what the possibilities could be. Awesome. Thank you. Um, next question is for Cox. Um, they're asking, do you guys service in Texas? Um, I'm not sure if you guys dropped in the chat where you guys are servicing. Ebony, are you there? Can you ask the question one more time? I apologize. <laughs> no problem. Um, this person asked, do you guys service in Texas? We do not. Okay. Um, where do you guys service, if you don't mind? Because a lot of people are asking, do you service here? Do you sure. Service I mean, there? so we're, yeah, we're, we're in California. Some of our larger markets are like uh, San Diego, um, Las Vegas. Uh, uh, Phoenix, Tulsa is a big market, um, also out in Virginia. So we're, we're over again, we're, we're 26 markets, so we're not super huge, uh, but really the best way to find out if we service your area um, is to, to visit that uh, site and enter in your zip code. But we're, we're in pockets all around, but sorry, Texas is not one of them. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question, excuse me, asking, is Comcast in the North Carolina Raleigh Durham area? So Fernando. Yeah, so I sent Joyce a, a private message sharing the conversation, but we are in the Pelham 
uh, Yanceyville and Providence area of um, North Carolina. Um, but just to reiterate um, what Ebony said, because I think it's a fantastic tool, if you go to everyone.on.org and then forward slash find offers, if you enter your zip code there, um, all of, uh, or a good portion of the low cost internet offers will pop up um, based on your zip code, which is just a, a tool, you know, can find out information from Cox, T-Mobile, Starry, um, and ourselves as well. Awesome. Great. Um, so how, another question is, how do the panelists feel about the idea of making broadband, inter, broadband internet a public utility? This is Dave. Um, I think it's a, a brilliant idea. In fact, I think that um, it should, should likely be categorized as such. Um, I know that the way that, that some of the funding um, happens to housing authorities is strictly driven along the lines of uh, uh, public utility. And so I, I really do, I think it's a conversation that should be taken to the next level. Uh, but, uh, you know, as, as much as you have running water, which is a, a, a life-sustaining item, a roof over your head, the ability to have uh, digital communications is a key component to economic uh, education and healthcare success. Thanks, David. Um, does anyone else have anything to add about making broadband internet a public utility? And this is Virginia from Starry. You know, I think our perspective is that, you know, policies that help further um, affordable broadband access um, are really critical, and we absolutely support that. I think they're really, we do really need to strike a balance, though, between um, allowing for innovative companies like Starry, who designed our own technology and was built from the ground up to thrive and come in and compete and be able to provide um, these services to communities, to be able to strike that balance between encouraging folks like us to come in and compete and provide services with um, a regulatory structure um, that does allow for competitive um, uh, entrance abilities to, uh, w without additional what I'll call regulatory overhang, if that makes sense. Um, for those of you who are sort of deep in the policy weeds in terms of broadband, um, you all know that there's um, an ongoing fight over how broadband is regulated, whether it's Title I or Title II. And, you know, I think having additional clarity around that and having um, additional priorities of, of um, how we expand and close, expand access and close the digital gap are critical. Um, but I don't know that we would go as far as saying um, to make it a public utility and regulate it as such. Awesome. Thanks, Virginia. Um, yeah, Dina um, from Dina Lyman Kim, she also dropped a resource in the chat, everyoneon.org. Um, she says if you go there and type in your zip code, I guess this is for all the participants, you go in there and type in your zip code and answer a few easy questions, you'll be able to find low-cost offers that are available in your area. So I think that's a great resource um, everyone should take advantage of. Looks like we have another question here. Are payments being reported to a credit bureau to increase the resident's credit score? I'm not sure who that's directed to. Um, I can say for Cox, just the mere payment um, and doing the timely payments would not be reported to a credit bureau. Uh, but unfortunately, um, you know, if one were to go into a non-pay disconnect, and I'm not sure if that's um, 31 days that they start to report or 60 days, uh, it could be uh, reported to a credit bureau. But I do know that just regular um, payments of the bill would not be reported. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Um, does anyone else have anything else to add? Looks like um, some of the questions are slowing down. If anyone has any last minute questions, um, please feel free to get them in. We have a little bit more time left or feel free to raise your hand and I can unmute you um, and you can ask live. Michaela, like we have a question. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. Do we have a question? Yeah, uh, one just came in. Um, this question is for Cox and Xfinity. Um, for families who need to work from home and have multiple children at school, and at home at the same time throughout the day, what speed plan would you would best serve this scenario? 
this is Ebony with Cox. So I, I think I can put something in the chat that is like an infographic because we do get that question quite a bit. Um, is 25-3 enough? And it is. I mean, for a standard household that, that may have two to three users going on at the same time, it is enough to take online classes, to do online research without a um, latency. Uh, so we do feel like 25-3 uh, it is sufficient for uh, distance learning. Yeah, Thank and then you. just to add to that, um, really quickly, um, you know, we've done studies as well, and we know that 25-3 can sustain multiple Zoom conversations at a time, uh, multiple um, Khan Academy lessons. Um, so it's not, um, we haven't heard as many uh, of these uh, issues arise. What we have heard, though, is that modem placement has a lot to do with it, um, where the modem is placed, you know, if it's in another room or if it's up high. Um, so we have a couple of videos on YouTube to kind of help with that, to troubleshoot Wi-Fi issues, and then to help with modem placement. Thanks, Fernando. Um, th thanks for everyone for your great questions. Um, Dina, did you want to give a few remarks? I'll be waiting to get some more questions in. Oh, I, I was actually going to ask a question um, for for David. Um, if, if if could you talk a little bit more about the pro your pro T Mobile's project Ten Million? Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, but I mentioned at the first of my comments that in 2018, we really took a look at government to see where we thought government was doing great work. And the work you're doing is one of the, the, the key areas that had impressed us, which is why we signed the stakeholder agreement. We also felt like um, first responders um, were uh, you know, under-resourced, and that was an area where they needed help, and then also uh, school-age children. And Project 10 million uh, uh, is a program designed to work through uh, school districts and through a local school district uh, uh, based upon free and reduced uh, lunch uh, each year for five years over the course of 10 years, meaning this year uh, we'll connect 2 million students uh, with broadband connectivity of up to 100 gigs of internet uh, free per year and will pay for the hotspot uh, for the student. So there's literally no cost to the school district for that connection. Uh, and, uh, and when we issue uh, those 2 million devices uh, per year, the students get them in that household for five years. Uh, and so each and every year, uh, we'll be issuing 2 million new devices um, out uh, and then they'll have five years to be able to do that. And then so the total program will ultimately run uh, for, for uh, 10 years. Uh, it's a $10 billion uh, commitment. And uh, members of my team are Dr. Lakeisha Taylor, who uh, had the um, effort uh, for us. Uh, and some of you may have known um, Dan Cox from Project One Million, which was an outside uh, foundation that was a part of Sprint's efforts. And we pulled Dan in, and uh, Dan's helping us as well with a uh, with a pretty large team underneath them, uh, working with the 13,000 school districts around the U.S. And uh, I have the honor of, of heading that and and, uh, and and being in charge of that uh, program throughout the U.S. And so if your school district uh, near you in your community would like to talk, my email is in there, and I am more than happy to take very quick action to make sure we're helping each and every one of these, uh, these families. One caveat is it's not one per student. Uh, it is one per household, and we know that there are at least 10 million households in the U.S. Uh, who need this kind of help. So we hope it makes a difference. Thank you so much, David. That's awesome. Thanks, David. Um, we, have, we have another question that just came in. Um, it's for all the panelists. Um, do any of you guys have experience working with PHAs to wire entire properties or buildings? And what kind of help can you guys offer PHAs who are looking to provide this for residents? Um, yes, this is Virginia from Starry. Um, we have a lot of experience working with public housing authorities to wire entire communities. Um, that's what we've done. Um, with uh, HACLA in Los Angeles, as well as the Denver um, Housing Authority. Um, we come in, we wire entire communities to, um, to provide our service um, so that every resident, each household, each apartment um, can get access to STARI. Um, and just to be clear, we, also, we offer both of our plans in all of our communities so that folks have um, the option to either subscribe to Starry Connect or our 200 megabits metrical plan. Um, so we, we do that to provide people flexibility. And um, if people want to go back and forth, we've had um, situations where folks may have been on the $50 plan, their financial 
situation may have changed, um, and then they switch over to the Connect plan, and, and we are able to do that um, and have that uh, flexibility for residents. But um, we work directly with the Housing Authority to determine, um, you know, how we can wire. We look at the infrastructure that exists there um, and uh, determine what the construction and deployment plan um, looks like and, and work very closely to ensure that um, our service um, can be delivered uh, seamlessly to residents. So, yes, yeah, we have a lot of experience doing that. Thanks, Virginia. Um, does anyone else have any experience wiring entire properties? Uh, this is Ebony with uh, Cox. So, yes, Cox Business uh, definitely has um, uh, that capability, and that's what that entire arm does. Um, and so if you're able to go to uh, Cox.com, actually, uh, uh, I think it's Cox Cares, backslash Cox Cares, uh, you can see the multitude of services that Cox Business has to offer, um, um, particularly for um, MDUs. Thanks, Ebony. Um, well, I guess if no one has anything else to add, um, it looks like the questions are slowing down, but I do anticipate um, a lot of the panelists getting a lot of emails from some of these communities. Um, but I do want to thank you guys. Um, before we leave, I do want to let you guys know that you will be directed to a survey um, at the end of this when the session is over. So please fill out the survey so we can continue to make this experience better for all of you all. And before we close out, I'll go ahead and pass it to Dina. Thank you so much. Thanks to our wonderful panelists for the great information and for, again, your continued support of, of Connect Home, of bridging the digital divide across the country, and um, just you're, you're all a pleasure to work with. So thank you so much. And I also want to thank our audience. Um, we are here to, to help you. So um, if you have any questions about the content today, you'll, you'll be getting um, the, the, the recording and the slides. But also feel free to reach out to us and reach out to the presenters themselves who have generously uh, included their contact information in the chat. So with that, um, thanks again. Tomorrow we have two sessions on the CARES Act. Please make sure to register for those. You'll hear from the Office of Public Housing, uh, the Office of Native American Programs, and CDBG about how CARES Act funds can be used for digital inclusion purposes. And then following that session, you'll hear from four communities, two tribal nations and, and two PHAs about how they have actually put CARES Act funding into, uh, into action for digital inclusion. So please uh, uh, don't miss those. Those are going to be great sessions as well. And as you can see, what we heard today complements what you will hear tomorrow. So thank you so much again to everybody, and we look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks so much. Have a great afternoon. Nina, thanks, thanks everyone. Nina, great job, thanks. everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.